What do you do with your leftover pumpkins that you were using as decoration? Hey y'all table, and thanks for stopping by and watching my crazy creative life. Um, this is just going to be a voiceover today, but I brought in all of my pumpkins that I had out for decoration out in my front yard, and I will insert a picture here. That was how it was set up. I thought it was so pretty this year. The only one that did not survive, I had two white pumpkins, and on the side of one of them, it's got like, I guess it's a moldy spot, or I don't know. But right now, I have this sitting in my living room. Uh, anyway, it's not a whole lot to it. Um, this is a big carving pumpkin. You can eat those. They say that they're not as flavorful, but you can still eat them. So, I'm going to go ahead and roast it up and fix it up just like I do the rest of them and just mix it all in together eventually. Um, and if it's not that sweet, maybe the other ones will sweeten it up or give it more flavor. This... Shoo, I'm sorry, I'm out of breath today. These are um, your actual pie pumpkins. Those are the little pie pumpkins. They are actually a lot sweeter, and that's what usually people uh, make the pumpkin puree out of to make your pumpkin pies and, and what have you. And I'm about positive this one, and this big huge thing, I know it's hard to see how just how big that thing is. Um, I could sit down on it, <laughs> it's that big. But I'm pretty sure that one and this one, I'm not, I think possibly that one, I could be wrong on that one. I believe they are what they call fairy tale pumpkins. And I was reading those in some research and I was reading and they are actually really sweet and they are really good to eat. So we're gonna go ahead and probably not all today, but within the next few days, uh, I'll at least start off by showing you some of these little ones. <laughs> probably bruise that one it's pretty much the same concept um i'm gonna wash these off since they've been sitting outside in the grass but you just pop them in your oven 400 degrees you can either cut them after you pull them out of the oven or before some people cut them before and just lay them down like on a big old cookie sheet or jelly roll sheet and you bake them on 400 for about an hour or at least until you stick a knife in there and it's super duper soft then you know that it's done and then after that you just like take a spoon and peel it away from the flesh and then put it in your food processor, blend it up or puree it up, and then there you go. There's your pumpkin puree. Or you can just stick it in there whole and do the same thing. And just as soon as it's soft where you can stick a knife in there, then you can cut it up. I mean, obviously, you want to dig out like the, the innards, the seeds and all that stuff. And then the seeds, once you get those cleaned off, you can take those and roast those up and eat those. And roasted pumpkin seeds are extremely healthy for you. I'll try to list some benefits um, of pumpkin seeds, how good they are. I know it, they're chock full of vitamins, but they're very good for gut health too. So I'll try to add some information in on that. So anyway, that's it. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, I just put it in my sink and took my little vegetable brush and just kind of scrubbed over it just a little bit. Nothing too major. Just kind of went over the outside because this is, we're not eating this anyway. Um, that will come off whenever we get it out of the oven. It will come loose from the skin. And all we're interested in is just the, the inside, the flesh of it. This thing's hard to... Cut. I tell you what, this one's not going to be so easy to pierce. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and put it in whole. Once it's real soft, then I'll pull it out. I'm going to uh, cook it at 400. At least an hour, I'll check it. And then if I can take the knife in and instead of, you know, trying to risk cutting myself, <laughs> I can put my knife in and it'd be really super soft. Then I know it's ready and I'll pull it out. I'll let it cool down. Then I'll cut it in half, scoop out the innards. Then I'll scoop out the flesh and we'll pre it up. Right, that sucker's quite heavy. Um, so I just put aluminum foil in my pan, put my pan in there, and then put it on top. I actually had to take out my top rack because it would not have fit had I not taken out the top rack. So I've got it laying here to the side. So anyway, I'm going to close this. Um, 
it's on 400. I'll let this, I'll check it back in about an hour and see what it's looking like. Okay, this is out of the oven. This took well over two hours. Well, it took two hours and then I left it in the oven just to cool down. It's still hot. Okay, this is a little, this ain't even half of it, but I'm going to go ahead and blending this up, put it in a Ziploc bag, and repeat the process until I get this whole pumpkin blended up. So I've made a gallon. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator for tonight and then I'll fool with it later whenever I get the rest made. But you can put it in the refrigerator for up to a week and the freezer I think up to three months. That's the easiest way I know how to get rid of all of the... That old slimy stuff off of them. I'm gonna lay these out on some paper towels to dry overnight and then when I do the roasting of, of the uh, pumpkin seeds, that will be another video. And there they are left to dry overnight. And that's it. Um, so with the rest of the pumpkins, I'll do the same thing. I'll put them, either cut them in half and put them in the onion oven, or I will put them in the oven and then cut them. I guess either way works. On 400 until they're soft where I can press easily with a knife. And that's it. So that's what you can do with pumpkins that are left over from Halloween. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have it. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.